Okay, so we're back at the cache coding screen and we're ready to turn our attention towards creating bank rules. And now I mentioned that cache coding was one of the more powerful features that Xero has to make the bookkeeping process very efficient. Well, bank rules rounds that out and it's kind of the one-two punch between cache coding and bank rules. Those together make a really powerful set of features that can honestly streamline about 75 to 80% of your bookkeeping. And what I mean is, in, in the course of your business, you're going to have many transactions that repeat from time to time. And most of these will generally be expenses, for example, parking expenses or automobile expenses or, you know, for many Amazon seller, things like sponsored products with Amazon's advertising platform. Those will just come in month in and month out and they'll always go to the same place. And when you encounter transactions that will always go to the same place, those make very good candidates to set up bank rules for. So let's take, for example, this Parkside kiosk. There's two transactions. And what we want to do is go ahead and just create a bank rule for these transactions. And so you have a few ways of getting to bank rules. So if you're in the cash coding screen, all you have to do is click this drop down button off to the far right and you'll see the very first link is to create a bank rule. Alternately, if you're on the reconcile screen, what you'll notice is there is a create rule link above every bank statement line. And so maybe this, for example, this Ridgeway Banking Corporation fee, it would make a good candidate to create a rule. So we just click create rule. So what you're going to see here is if you create a rule from the cash coding screen or the reconcile screen, it's actually going to pull over the details from the bank statement. So this was on the reconcile screen and here was our cash coding screen. You see PayPal and then there's this Parkside kiosk data. Well, I'm going to walk you through how to set up a bank rule here. So the first section of creating a rule is you're going to notice that it's depending on if it was money coming in or money going out, you can create a spend money rule or a receive money rule. So in this case, we decided to create a rule on, on a transaction where money was going out of the account. So what we'll do in this first section is we'll create our criteria. We have to create a set of criteria that is going to pick up this transaction every single time it's imported. You'll see the first box. So you'll see where it says when money spent on the bank statement and then you can say it matches all of the following conditions or any of the conditions. Generally, I'll just go ahead. I'm only going to create one criteria so it makes sense to do all. If you find that it's kind of, if you need to do an either or situation where it might show up like this or it might show up like that, that's where you'd want to use an in, it would use any, but generally all suffices. And then we'll come to our first set of criteria. And so what you'll see in this first drop box is you can select, well, what type of data is going to be our criteria? So are we looking in the payee? Are we looking in the description field or the amount field or the reference field or an analysis code? Or finally, you can just choose any text field. So if the data across any of these text fields, is that if that's what we want to set our criteria to, we'll go ahead. And I think it's a good practice to put any text field. So this will obviously exclude amount. If you're not quite sure if it's going to come in through the payee or come in through the reference or description, just go ahead and click any text field. And then the second one is you can use equals if you're confident that the data is always going to be the same. You can put contains if maybe one part of the data is always going to stay the same, but maybe not the whole reference column as a whole is going to stay the same. And, and what I say, it's usually best practice to put contains and then 
choose the part that is going to be always stay the same. So that's one option or you can use starts with or you can actually even just put is blank. So generally I stay with equals or contains. Probably 90% of the time I use contains. So when any text field contains and then you're going to have the actual string of data to set the condition under. So one thing I'll say here is whenever whatever you set in this text box it's going to try to match every single character. So a P followed by an A followed by an R etc. and it's even going to pick up spaces. If the reference doesn't have a space between Parkside and Kiosk, then this is how you would need to put the text field. If there is a space, you obviously need to put that. So it picks up all characters, including spaces. So you just have to be pretty precise there. And so once we feel that that criteria is, is solid, we'll move on to the second section, which is to set the contact. So do you want this, the contact to be either an existing or new contact? Or do we want it to be the payee that shows up in the feed? Or do we just want to simply enter it during the reconciliation? What I'll say here is that if you want to enter it from the payee, this, if you're with a typical checking or credit card account, nothing will be in the payee column. So if you set that, it's going to just show up blank. Also, if you put enter during reconciliation, well, that's not as ideal either because we want to make this as efficient as possible. And if we can, it'd be best not to have to enter data during the reconciliation. We want it to all be laid out for us. So it's kind of a best practice to enter existing or new contact. And then what we'll do is we'll search for that existing contact, Parkside Kiosk. Looks like that's not already in our system. So I'll go ahead and type that in and then click tab. And so now that I feel good about how we're setting the contact, we're now ready to turn our attention to, well, how do we want to categorize the transactions? And so Zero is very intelligent in that it can break up the transactions based on either fixed amounts or based on percentages. The default is to just assign 100% of the transaction to an account, so maybe automobile expenses. That's really the default, and probably 99% of the time, that's all you're going to do. But let's say you need to split a transaction. So what happens if only 50% goes to automobile, but the other 50% goes to insurance? Well, then what we can do here is create a second line code that to insurance and then under the expense column we put 50 to automobile and then 50 to insurance and when we do it'll split up those transactions 50 50 moving forward but the other option for us here is well what if it's not a percentage isn't really appropriate and what if maybe a fixed amount goes to one place and then the rest goes to another so there's a common case like with the, some software that I use, I pay a base amount to software. So I maybe call that like an office expense. And so what it, so like the first $50 of the software is an office expense, but then everything over $50 goes to like card processing fees. So maybe that would be something like merchant account fees or bank service charges might be another one. So here you have an option to say, well, I want you to assign the first $50 to this place and then everything after that, 100%, I want you to allocate to bank service charges. So those are all the different options between fixed values or percentages. And so I'm just going to say 100% of this is an automobile expense. And it brings up the point, should we enter a description or not? I generally don't enter descriptions. And then we'll move on to the next section, which is to set a reference. And generally, the reference will come in streamed automatically. And so the best case is to let the reference be set from the reference. 
under the sixth section, we have the opportunity to target this rule on a certain account. So you really have two options. You can either target it to a specific account or you can target it to all accounts. At this time, there isn't an option to say you had three accounts, you want to run this on two of them, but not the third. You can either do one or all. So I generally do it on all bank accounts. And then the final step is, of course, to give the rule a title. And I generally let the rule be the contact name. And then if I anticipate there will be multiple rules for a single contact, I might say Parkside Kiosk Automobile Expense. And I ha this is pretty common with a service like Google where they have you know, Google AdWords, but they also have Google Apps or if you run your email through them or that kind of thing. So anyways, give the title a rule. The best practice is generally to do a contact. And if there's going to be multiple under a single contact, then add in whatever the account is. From there, we'll click Save to save this rule. What it's going to do if we click to create a bank rule from the cash coding screen, it's going to bring us right back. And what I want to turn your attention toward is this Parkside kiosk we created a rule for. And what you notice is the payee is listed, but it's also listed the account. So we told it to categorize transactions to automobile expenses. And here we are, these bank rules have run automatically and it's pre-coded these transactions for us. What you can see happening here is if you go through the first two, three, four months of your transactions and you get all of your repeating transactions and you set up bank rules for them, all you have to do is you'll come over to this cash coding screen and you'll verify that the bank rules are running correctly. And then all you have to do is click the save and reconcile all button at the bottom. And once you do, it will save all four of those without us ever having to physically categorize them. You can see how powerful this could get if, if you keep up with it and you're diligent to create bank rules for each of your repeating transactions. Well then, you know, two, three, four months down the road, you could have nearly 75 to 80 percent of your transactions already pre-coded for you just from your bank rules. And so with just one click of the button, you can knock out and categorize, you know, just a huge chunk of your ongoing transactions. So that is essentially how bank rules function. Just as a reminder, you can access bank rules from the drop down menu on the cash coding screen, or you can use the reconcile tab, or you can also use manage account and then click bank rules under the third tab. That is a wrap on bank rules, and I'll see you on the other side.